In this video we're going to look at the Shirley background algorithm and the reason that you need a background algorithm is because a photo emission spectrum includes an inelastically scattered background that is associated with electrons moving through a solid state with a given energy. So these photo emission peaks represent electrons of a given kinetic energy but when these electrons move through the solid state they are scattered and lose energy and therefore the signal that should be here at the gold 4f appear at energies to lower kinetic energy than the peak itself and this background will be a result of not just these 4f electrons but these 5p and the valence band as well so these all represent a source for this background signal that must be removed from a gold 4d doublet that is at a lower kinetic energy. Now in addition when the gold 4d electrons appear these two are scattered so not all 4d electrons will leave the surface and be recorded at the characteristic energy of the gold 4d. So the idea of a Shirley background is to calculate an estimate of what the background should be beneath a pair of peaks such as these so that we can then calculate the peak area and use that as part of a quantification by XPS. To create a Shirley background we use the quantification parameters dialog window and the regions property page on this dialog window then display data in the active tile before pressing the create button and as a result of the create button a new region is created with a name and the limits here which can be adjusted using the mouse or specified here by entering a value so I could make that minus 2 for example and then the background type this has come in as linear we'll make that Shirley by entering S or I could enter Shirley and then press return and as a result a Shirley background is calculated and the background represents the estimate for the inelastic scattering of electrons as they move through the solid state using the Shirley approximation. The background calculated by the Shirley algorithm is achieved by doing a calculation of this form where at a given point the background value is calculated by looking at the ratio of these areas A1 and A2 and forming a weighted sum of the intensities at I1 and I2 over the range of the interval. Now at first sight this looks like a very straightforward calculation in the sense that if we know area 1 and area 2 we can calculate a Shirley background. However, the background is the unknown so what you have to do is start with an estimate for the background estimate A1, estimate A2 and then calculate a new background and you have to repeat this process until it converges to the Shirley background as seen here. The reason that I applied the Shirley background to the valence band of gold is because the original paper published in 1972 by Shirley describing the Shirley background was aimed at valence band data with these characteristics that is to say that above the Fermi edge the signal was essentially zero but for noise due to the detector and that's because they made use of a monochromated x-ray source on a Hewlett Packard instrument and below the valence band peaks the gold spectrum is very flat and this is characteristic of a Shirley background. It tends to produce a flat background below a peak in terms of kinetic energy. So the target for this algorithm was data of this form. And that is slightly different from what you see for data such as these, where we have a sloping background, again a sloping background, and the background is certainly not zero at higher kinetic energies. So isn't as appropriate for core levels as it is for the valence band for the gold. 
Nevertheless, the Shirley algorithm is regularly applied to core level electrons. So if we produce a Shirley background for these 4D doublets, you again see a curved background that is calculated based on areas below and above each point in the background. And we do see this characteristic flat response that you see here at the ends of these Shirley backgrounds. And that would be appropriate if we are looking at these valence band spectra, but not necessarily so appropriate if you have spectra such as these where you can clearly see the background is falling away as a consequence of the energy reducing. A Shirley background has been used over the years to accommodate peaks such as these because there is a step here and intuitively the Shirley background doesn't look too bad especially for metallic materials. However there are other materials for which the Shirley background is not necessarily as appropriate and this is an example of copper 1 plus oxide where we've got a band gap and as a consequence of having a band gap you often see a delay in the response of the background to a photoemission peak. So the background shown here is simulating a flat background beneath the peak and a rise that is offset that would be a characteristic offset of the band gap for this copper 1 plus oxide. So let's just have a look at this by copying this copper peak and I'll copy it again so I can then change the background type and still have reference to the old background type. So I'm going to go from this particular Tugard type of background to a Shirley. Now the peak fit won't be quite so good because the, the line shape has been designed based on the Tugard background. So you can see that it's lifting up here. But if you just simply look at the backgrounds, we can see the different characteristics. I'll close this window so I can zoom in without adjusting the region limits. And this is a Shirley background with a characteristic flat background following the rise in the data. But this S shape here would be more characteristic of what you might see in metallic copper. Whereas in this copper 1 plus oxide, the flat response with a rise following the peak is more intuitive than the Shirley shape that we see here directly beneath the peak. You can see that the response is very clearly centered on the peak maximum from the Shirley, whereas the offset here is more to do with the modeling of a band gap for the copper 1 plus oxide.